وقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبه له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين وشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين All praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him as He ought to be praised Sending our salutations and peace and blessings on His last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with yet another day of your Mawlid Jumu'ah and granting us the ability and the iman to be here in his house. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for the ummah across the globe that they will also be in the house of Allah and giving praise and thanks to him on this auspicious day of your Mawlid Jumu'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us who are present here and bless those who are not here with us today members of our Jamaat and elsewhere. May Allah bless them immensely and may Allah make it easy for them and fulfill their needs for them in this world as well as in the next. Tomorrow evening <coughs> will mark the end of this month of Safar and will commence the month of Rabi al-Awwal. A very significant month, a very special month. Unfortunately, Gatherings will not be the same to hold any function, Miladun Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this does not take away our responsibilities and the rewards that we get for sending abundantly Darur and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wherever you are, send as much as possible abundantly Darur and the Blessed Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. The month of Rabi al-Awwal, very significant. It has in it three main occurrences that took place in the month of Rabi al-Awwal. The month of Rabi al-Awwal is the month in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. He was born, according to many traditions, and unanimously accepted on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal. The month of Rabi al-Awwal also signifies the commencement of the Hijrah. When the new moon of Rabi al-Awwal was seen, Rasulullah sallallahu was already has already started the Hijrah. And the Hijrah ended in the month of Rabi al-Awwal on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal as well. And also in the month of Rabi al-Awwal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away the blessed life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu when he was asked why he used to fast on a Monday, he said, because it was the day I was born. Born Monday the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal. So a very significant month. And if Allah bless us to witness this month. We, as I said, we should engage in a lot of darood on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My khutbah today is to mention some of the excellent names of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is something we need to bear in mind. The excellent names, the qualities of you know, of those names that were given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I started the khutbah with uh, the, last, the last part of the ayat in Surah Al-Hashr, Surah number 59, the last ayat, the last verse. Allah speaks about himself. Lahu asma'ul husna. And in that ending up part of the ayat, Allah mentions some of his attributes. And then he says, To him belongs the most beautiful names of Allah. And Allah does not share his attributes 
in the sense of making, you know, he does not share his attributes to anyone in making them equal with him. No, you'll never find that. All we have been mentioning, 99 names of Allah, and none of these 99 names, no creation of Allah can be equal, regardless of which one you take. If you take Al-Alim, he is the most knowing, the most knowledgeable. Allah will never share or give that attribute to any creation to make that individual or that thing equal with Allah in all knowing. And this is, this is what we need to understand. Alhamdulillah, when we, when we mention the names of Allah, in all those attributes above our heads, no other being come to our mind except Allah. And this is very unique. Because nothing in creation can be like Him. But these same attributes of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pass it down to a lower level to His beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A lower level, not, not, not equal to Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, and this, has, and this hadith was mentioned by the father of Jubir, Mutim Jubir, right anhu, and he says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have five names. Now names are very important and significant for any human being. Some of us, have beautiful names, isn't that so? Beautiful Islamic names. But then, for many of us, our actions and life does not represent those names. Something to think about. Our lives and our actions does not represent the names that we have. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have five names. Five names was given to him. And these are not self names that he himself gave himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him these names. Let me take you through these names, these five names. He said, Ana Muhammad, Ana Ahmad. I am, I am Muhammad. And I am Ahmad. I'll take you through the five names and then I'll explain Ahmad and Muhammad. He said, I am Al Mahi, the obliterator of kufr, disbelief. Meaning to say that when you when you come in contact with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you accept him, there is no quality, there is no type of disbelief in you as regards in the worshipping of Allah. Al-Mahi, I am the obliterator of kufur, disbelief, shirk. He said, I am Al-Hashir, number four. And Hashir means the gatherer. There are many interpretations of this. That on the day of judgment, people will be gathering at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of humanity. Because he will be given the permission to intercede. And he says, I am Al-Aqib. Aqib means I am the last in succession of the prophets. No more Nabi, no more Rasul after me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in his book Muhammad and Ahmad.
And this is one of the special gifts of Allah to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the names of Muhammad and Ahmad. If you look at these two names, they, the names themselves have praise in them. Hamd. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says in the beginning of Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdu. So even if we don't praise, now I need to, you know, make sure this is understood. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he ought to be praised. And we praise Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he ought to be praised. But the praising of Allah is far superior than the praising of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we need to make that distinction. We cannot praise Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we praise Allah. We need to bear that in mind. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this name Muhammad, it is mentioned that it means the one who praises Allah the most. Muhammad. There is no human being that praises Allah the most as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is why that name is given by Allah. When Amina, his mother, had him inside of her, she was told that when this child is born, and she was told by an angel, when this child is born, you shall call him Muhammad. Muhammad means the one who praises Allah the most. I know this is something I... I never knew before and I came across it. Amazing. When, when Rasulullah went up on the mirage, and Allah gave him what? 50 times salawat. 50 times. But when he came back, on his way back, Musa stopped him. And Musa wanted to know what, what transpired. And Rasulullah told him, I was given five times salawat. What Musa salam said to him, he said, your followers, he didn't say you. He didn't say you, Muhammad. He said, your followers will not be able to do that. And it has been mentioned by various scholars that Rasulullah maintained 50 times salawat every day of his life. All this salat put together. He prayed 50 salat every day. That will include everything, part which we, which we even know. But five times salawat was compulsory upon us. Very interesting point, you know, just recently I came across that. So there is so much still to know in this world and about Islam and about the deen, about Rasulullah sallallahu So Muhammad, the one who praises Allah the most. And Ahmad, the one who is praised the most. Ahmad, the one who is praised the most. There is not a human being, another human being, in this world, or which was created by Allah, from Adam alayhi salam until the last person to come into this world, there is not another human being that has been praised the most as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Allah put his name next to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Azan is being called 
every minute of the day throughout the globe. And when we hear the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi we send blessings on him. You can imagine. Countless, endless blessings praising Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And as I said, the distinction between the praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the praise of Allah is two different things. In the Quran, Chapter 33, Ayat 56, Allah SWT make mention. Inna Allahu wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Just imagine. The only messenger of Allah that Allah and His angels is sending constantly praise. The only messenger. And if Allah and his angels, and you can imagine, we cannot, we, 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 we cannot come close to know of knowing the amount of angels it has. And Allah didn't say some angels, he said Allah and his angels. Send Darud and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya yuhallazina amanu, you and I, and every ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is commanded by Allah, Ya ayyuhalazina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. You also send the rule on him. So he is the one, Ahmad, the one who is most praised. And Muhammad, the one who praises Allah the most. And what, what, what is also interesting, The name Ahmad is mentioned by Isa alayhi salam. He told his people, and this is about 600 years plus before the coming of, of, of Muhammad, which is Ahmad himself. 600 years before, Isa alayhi salam mentioned to his people, Bani Israel, about a messenger who will come after him, and that messenger's name is Ahmad. And you'll find us in chapter 61 of the Quran, ayat number 6. And even though that name was mentioned 600 years before the coming of Muhammad sallallahu nobody had that name. Nobody, not even from Bani Israel side, had that name, Ahmad. And similarly with Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Amina was told, she had not yet given birth, but when she was told that the child, when this child is born, you shall call him Muhammad. That name was not known before. That name was not given to anyone before. But guess what? It is mentioned when, the, when that name was mentioned to Amina, before he was born, you know, he didn't born at the same time. Before he was born, and even after he was born, a lot of Arabs who had newborn sons, they began to name their, their sons Muhammad. Hoping and thinking that this, this, this prophet-to-be will be from among them. I, and as mentioned in tradition, there, there, there is about six, six persons who named their, their newborn sons Muhammad. But Allah didn't choose those Muhammad, He chose the, 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 the Muhammad from Amina. A blessed name. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his attributes. You know, Muhammad Sallallahu said he has five names. But there are many more, you know. Countless. We don't even know. Because all his attributes of Allah, Allah bring it down to a lower level to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Isn't that so? He is the most 
compassionate, the most merciful. But then he sends Muhammad sallallahu alaihi as Rahman and Rahim, not our Rahman and our Rahim. And he was sent as a mercy to mankind. So Allah even put in his attributes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa but on a lower level we need to understand that. Rasulullah sallallahu could never be Allah and he could never be worshipped as equal with Allah. Allah SWT says in Quran that Allah is he himself is Azizul Hakim. Muhammad, Allah SWT refers to Muhammad as also Hakim. But not, not, not in that level of, Muhammad, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, oh Muhammad, they can have no faith. Nobody can have any faith. Unless they make you the Hakim. The judge in all their affairs. Allah, Allah is Azizul Hakim. Allah is the, the all-wise. But Allah is saying to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they can have no faith until they make you the final arbitrator in all their decisions. You are the judge among them. And in many, if not all the attributes, Allah refers to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you have five names and then you have so many others. And finally, I want to end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, never addresses his beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the name Muhammad in the Quran. Never. The name Muhammad is mentioned many places. There's a surah by the name of Muhammad itself, name Muhammad. But Allah never mentioned the name or address the name Muhammad when he when he's speaking to Muhammad. He never say Ya Muhammad. You will see many places in the Quran Allah says, Ya Ibrahim, Ya Musa, Ya Isa, Ya Noah, Ya Adama. But never, never, never he says Ya Muhammad. This is beloved. But you know what he did? He addressed his beloved by his prophetic status. And so you'll come across these names. Yasin is one of them, which refers to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Muzammil, which refers to him. Ya Mudathir, which refers to him. Toha and so many others in his prophetic status. Like someone is a doctor, he might, he might be named Ahmad, but to give him that, that respect and honor, you'll say Dr. Ahmad. Allah is saying Yasin refers to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so in this month of Rabiul Awwal, as we come into it, let us remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abundantly. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his companions, I want to see my friends. I'm longing to see my friends. Companion said to Rasulullah sallallahu sallam, are we not your friends? He says, no, you are not my friends. You are what? You are my sahabas. You are my companions. My friends are those who, who will believe in me, who will come after me and who will believe in me and who have not seen me. They are my friends. Who is that? You and I. We are not privileged to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he says, he, he is longing to see us. He 
He is longing to see us. He, we, we are his friends. So let us send abundantly the rule on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and build that connection and closeness with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah bless us and forgive us. You know, the favor of Allah of bringing us into the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is something which we cannot praise Allah enough for. Because this is our first stage and our first step into Jannah by accepting and believing in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah bless our Jamaat in all of our affairs. May He help us and may He help us to send abundantly the rule on His beloved Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when we stand on that day, He will intercede for us and He will cause us to enter into Jannah with Him, inshallah. Akulu kawli haza astagfirullahi wa lakum wa itaya muslimin wa kulu zanbin astagfiruhu innahu ghafuru rahim. Allah